Well, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, one of the Queen's favourite hobbies and pastimes, and as we all know, this is horse racing. She's actually got a racehorse in Australia at the moment, Chalkstream it's called. Joining us live now is the former Howard Government Minister and Australia Turf Club Chairman Peter McGoran. Peter, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So we, we spoke about this topic a little bit earlier. It's a, fu a funny little vignette. So each day, the Queen, while she was staying here at Buckingham Palace behind us, she started the day off with some toast, a uh, cup of Earl Grey tea. She read the Britain's Daily Telegraph <laughs> newspaper and... It was a copy of the Racing Post as well. So she kept a keen, uh, keen eye on racing always. Oh, ab absolutely. I, I don't think people fully realise her, her passion, near obsession with uh, horses, race horses especially. From a young woman, uh, she built a large breeding and racing stable that continued uh, o over the decades. So much so she raced some horses in Australia, with Gay Waterhouse as a trainer and Chris Waller, who are our two leading trainers, and she would ring them on a Saturday night after the horse ran to see how it performed and talk about yeah. other horses in the field. She'd talk about the breeding. It was something that Chris Waller and Gay Waterhouse treasured. Yeah, uh, well, I can see why. I would treasure some late-night <laughs> phone calls from the Queen as well. You were lucky enough to meet her, Peter, several times when you were Minister for the Centenary. Yes, in the year 2000, as Minister for Centenary of Federation, I hosted a number of events when the Queen came to Australia in the year 2000 to help us celebrate. And then uh, John Howard led a delegation in 2001 to London, where I, I was able to again meet her on occasions. It is true she had a dry wit. I can remember I hosted her at the opening of the National Museum in, at about 10am in Canberra in the year 2000 and then I had to rush, get ahead of her for the next opening of a Christianity centre in the, in the parliamentary triangle and Mr Howard said, oh, do you know Peter McGowan, our minister? And she said, quick as a flash, oh yes, the minister's been following me around all day. Um, and she always had a twinkle in her <laughs> eye. There's no doubt she was a, a much, much bigger personality. And when I met her again in London, she was kind enough to say, uh, good to see you again, Minister. Now, I'm sure she got a briefing on that, but it does make you feel great. And that was, of course, uh, a, mm. a, a great hallmark of her personality and character, her empathy for people and her ability to put people at ease. How did you feel watching that funeral procession today, Peter? Look, uh, very touching, uh, very moving. Uh, it's a great sadness, but what a life, uh, well lived, a, lo a long life. As, as an Australian, I'm, I'm proud that she was queen of our country. She visited here 16 times, and usually for prolonged periods. Mm. She loved Australia, she loved Australians, and uh, we're much the poorer for her passing. Yeah, we certainly are. And look, it is too early for this discussion, but the discussion is being had in places like Scotland, and that is about moving away uh, from the Commonwealth or um, becoming more independent. I think a lot of Australians are Elizabethan, not necessarily monarchists. Do you see it that way, Peter McGorrow? Yeah, quite possibly, but... Um the remarkable thing of all the tributes, your own and others, over the last few days and in the days to come, you see the whole breadth of her life and it hasn't always been plain sailing, not either as a, as a queen or as a mother. And we've seen that at times, particularly in the 1960s, uh, the, the royal family became caricatures for a lot of the comedians and the, uh, and the revolutionary times and she had to bring that back to make the royalty, uh, the royal family acceptable to the British themselves. So uh, you, it has to evolve. Charles will have to find ways to engage with Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, uh, to keep the kingdom united. He has many, many challenges ahead. But you have to say, uh, perhaps a little bit surprisingly, how brilliant he's been uh, since his mother's passing. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. Well, I mean, he's had quite the apprenticeship, hasn't he? <laughs> yes, yes, he's very skilled, uh, but he hasn't been a rabbit in headlights. And I know they've been preparing uh, Project Bridge or Operation Bridge for, for decades now. But, but nonetheless, he, 
look, he's idiosyncratic. We all know that. He has his causes, organic and environmental and so on, much of which he's been validated on as the decades have gone by. Um, but uh, <laughs> there's something more steely about Charles now that I think will hold him in good stead. Yeah, I think so too. Peter McGoran, uh, such a pleasure to talk to you this morning. Appreciate that. And